Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K Now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next few hours, along with Mike. Sunday morning. <laughs> Say it again, because you were f- muted here. Oh, good Sunday morning. And Nick is here. Good morning. Come on, Nick. Oh, good Sunday morning. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so Spence is not going to be with us today, I guess, but uh, don't worry about specials. Nick jumped in, and he did it, and we'll see how it's going when when, when the time comes. I'm sure it's going to be great, though. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be great, I'm too. sure it's going to be great. Any sure washers, dryers, no, washers, we're dryers? Gonna, no? We're going to have no audience after this. Yeah, we've got washers, dryers, cases of water. Okay, Those are on good, sale this good. week. Some good stuff. Some laundry detergent. Our number is 919-518-9773. Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And this today's show is being brought to you by Adamus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. And this broadcast is also made possible by Telestream Wirecast Software. Uh, one thing that we... That I discovered Friday night is that bamboozer is no longer an option here. If you and would care to explain that. They comped us a, uh, okay, bamboozer about, what, a year or two ago decided that they are not going to do any more, um, not going to have memberships, for, free memberships accounts from people that do what we are doing. They only wanted people with smartphones, uh, like the, the citizen reporters. They, yeah, they wanted, they wanted jur- uh, like journalists and, and yeah. citizen journalists, people broadcasting that kind of stuff. And if, uh, if you wanted to do what, what we're doing, you had to pay something like 300 and some dollars a month. Um, just, just approaching them and, telling them what we do and all that. They said, oh, no, it's okay. You can stay on. So we stayed. Apparently, after the first of the year, they they canceled. I I have a theory that in their system, they had you just set till 2014, and if you contact them, they'd give it back. Well, actually, I I I I think it's good. I was thinking about it, what you were saying. And I went and looked, and I remember you can go into the account and you can look at the contract, so to speak, mm-hmm. and it says that it's open-ended. Interesting. It did not have a date on it. But I'm wondering, so, just like but I'm sure it's their, fine. It's in no the back end. I'm wondering at, if it expired now the first. I don't. I mean, if, if I mean, I'll get in touch with them. If we get it back, I mean, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna use it. Uh, well, then I wouldn't ask them for it. They what? I said then I wouldn't ask them for it. Well, except nah, that for Who knows emergency, what else is gonna blow up. True. Yep. I mean, I in, instead of bamboozer, I added Vaughn, and we are streaming to Vaughn, and the uh, um, quality on Vaughn is probably higher than the one on the other ones, just for the mere fact that it goes straight out of this machine. And not not by much though. Do I? Not by much. They're comparable. Well, I mean, you can you can actually read the little uh, text at the very bottom. 
that it's it's really really clear. But they do have a long uh, pre roll, and mm. so you 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 could be in it, again. In case something happens, then there is an alternative. The only yeah. reason I'm I'm streaming there is because it's from two different machines. And if you remember the like two weeks ago, when was it? Three weeks ago, when the streaming machine crapped out. At least we could go to Bamboozer, which was coming out of this machine here, and and keep on like nothing happened. That was options, the whole options, 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 redundancy to a point. Yep. Anyway, so, uh, but it's good. It's it's less work for me actually not to use Bamboozer because they had it was like an account per show. And that it's fine. It's 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 really good like that. So I just make yep, everything started. Um happy new year everybody. Yeah, there we hope, go. Happy New Year. Hope hope you had the uh another one August. bites the dust. A what? M9. I know. I need to raise it. Well, you'll get a hearing aid. Yeah, <laughs> either that or. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I said another one bites the dust. You did? No, you didn't. No, another year. <laughs> yeah. Never yep. mind. It 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 not it amazing how fast it passes these days? When you're having fun. Yeah, it's when you're having fun or when you're getting old. It's just, well, I don't know if that's what it is, but I know that m having been away from the office for three weeks, I started to say off work. That's not accurate. But having been away from the office for three weeks, it seems like about all I do is take showers. The days <laughs> just, just zoom by. You're going to work. You're going back tomorrow, right? Uh, as far as I know. They Nick. haven't called me to tell me otherwise. Mike wishes that he got fired. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Nick, you're not starting school tomorrow, right? Oh, of course we are. What do you mean? I thought you told me you had more days because you got out nope. later. Nope. Oh. Well, I'll see you 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. No, all right. Okay. So what else is happening not a whole lot. And Mike, um, you were I'm gonna bring something that was out of the show into the show. You were talking about Uma yesterday, which is uh Obi Uma. High. Oh, you weren't talking about the Uma? No. What's the Obi High then? Uh Obi High is a uh, an ATA for VOIP phone lines that is Google approved for interfacing with Google Voice. Okay, so what do you do? You hook it to a computer? You just hook it to Ethernet? No, no it's just a box. You just plug okay. it into the Ethernet, okay. and you have tip and ring coming out of the box, and meaning that your home telephone, you pick up your home phone, and you're talking on Google Voice. How much is uh, how much is this device? They've got them. Uh, I, I was, the cheaper one, they had some in the $30, $40 range. The oh, one wow. with two lines and faxes was $72. But that's dirt cheap. Well, it's nothing. Uh but I mean, it just it seemed to make a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm going to buy one. I just don't know which one to buy. I got sort of distracted yesterday. Interesting. So now, will this only work with Google Voice, or will it work with other systems too? It will work with any standard VoIP. Okay, because that's good. Because who who knows how long Google Voice will be around? Part of the the reason I didn't go ahead and order it is uh, it's about this time of the year that Google announces whether they're going to continue with it free for another year. Mm -hmm. Based on my observations, which mean absolutely nothing, it doesn't seem to me that Google Voice has enough of a market penetration that they are really commanding any sort of a uh, that any sort of a premium at this point. That if that makes any sense. You th so you think this is the last year for it? Oh, I don't have any idea. They, 
I mean, the way Google does things, it could be free forever. Yeah. I mean, Gmail is free, knock on wood. Mm-hmm. Mike, is this a different UMA than the standard one that you can buy? Uh... No, this is a different... I'm, I misspoke with the name. I couldn't remember. It's what it Obihai. Called. O-B-I-H-A-I. Obihai. Oh. So... Uh, it looks to be a good box. I mean, the first ones that came out in 2011, there were issues. Then at some point, part of what, as I understood, as it was explained to me, to work with Google Voice, you had to give them your Google username and password. Google said, nope, that's beyond the terms of service. You're not allowed to give the username and password to a third party. So Google announced that they were not going to accept incoming connections from an OBI device, as I understand it. Yorvik can can correct me if I'm wrong about this. But then, as as this is the part I'm very unclear about, OBI worked with Google to find a way that they could ping Google with ping it for the username and password, and somehow Google Voice would send them a token that would validate on the OBI account so that they were not in violation of the terms of service. And subsequently, Google Voice, uh, the OBI device, is actually Google Voice certified. Whatever cool. their differences were, they got them worked out. And that's nice that Google is working with them. It's nice that Google acknowledges that anyone else in the world exists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to buy one to play with it, not not just for Google Voice. Google Voice is interesting. I have several Google Voice accounts and and phone numbers. But um, and how much is this box? About seventy five bucks. That's oh. that's the top of the line. Seventy five bucks. There's a cheaper one for about forty five, I think. Okay, what is the difference between the lower and the top I, of the line? I can't figure it out. There's an OB high, there's a 100, a 110, a 200, and a 202. I mean, there, there are many more above that for, for enterprise use, for business use. But the, uh, the, the real, I don't know what the differences are. Steve posted a link to the product primer on their website, but I, I just didn't spend a lot of time on it yesterday because it would not have shipped until Monday anyway. I, take time today and look. I don't know that I'm going to order it today. It would be fun to play with. It would be fun to have it to report back here on the show because if it works well with Google Voice, that's free telephone service. Yep. At least for a while. And particularly where to me it makes the most sense and what I'm looking at doing is I'm getting rid of, I want to, and I haven't done it yet, I want to get rid of my home landline with AT&T. I kept it for a long time because the quality is so much better than any other alternative. <clears throat> but the fact is that copper landlines at current predictions will be completely gone in five years. <clears throat> They're going to discontinue them. They're no longer going to be available from the phone company. So eventually you have to get rid of it. But the difference is that uh, if I, I like the, I hate talking on a cell phone. And so long as I have the ability to reach over here and grab a regular telephone and make and receive phone calls with mm-hmm. it when I want to, right. at this point in time, it does not have to be an AT&T copper line. And, and quite candidly, I went the, the week before Christmas, I don't remember what I was doing. I know what I was doing. I went shopping for a new cell phone plan, which required me to take a good look at my AT&T bill. And unbeknownst to me, for the past three months, they had put some sort of junk charge on there, $7 a month for for distinctive ringing, which they couldn't explain to me what it was. And and since I have the, the top-end package anyway that includes distinctive ringing for two different phone lines, which I have two numbers on the same line, they couldn't tell me what it was for. They That's went back and credited that money for four months, actually. That's what it's for. But but look, if you've got two numbers yeah. on the same phone line, right. they ring differently. That's you what distinctive standard, ring is. Right. But you have, I understand, but you have the standard ring. <clears throat> right. 
for the main number, right. and you have a double ring for the second number. Okay. And I even have a third ring, which is a long, short, long for a third number. And suddenly right. they started charging you. Well, they no, <laughs> they. I mean, I haven't tested it since they took it off the line, but I really don't care which line's ringing. Well, I'm some. I mean, that in, up anyway. that that was like in the in the older in the old days when it started like that with Bell South. You could have one line, and you can have a line for the parents, a line for the kids. And you knew who it was for, so the, the parent didn't have to pick up and say, "Hey, Joe, this is for you." You know, they knew right away that's for the kids. That But they still haven't told me what this, this distinct ringing yeah. of this this yeah. premium ringing package is. I right. don't know what it is. So, Interesting. whatever it is, I don't want it. Then they also had some other junk charge on there. Oh, they were they had originally offered me. When what happened was I had a thirty-eight dollar a month phone bill. I called him and and I said how much I I, I got this long distance telephone bill, and I called him. I said look I'm getting ready to blow you guys out of the water, but before I do I thought I would ask, how much would it cost to add unlimited long distance to this telephone line? I want to mm -hmm. see what the total cost is. And as I recall, it was seven dollars per month additional. And what I did was, um, the um, Uh, I don't remember all the numbers, but in essence, they came back. Well, guess what? We've got a special plan just for you. And I said, wow, <laughs> I'm glad I called. I, I had no idea. And they lowered my bill from $38 to $28 and then added $4, $6, or $7 a month for long distance. So anyway, my bill, as I recall, was supposed to be around $34 a month. Well, when I did this checking in December and looked, it was almost $40 a month, the way they had added junk f f charges and fees on there and things that I'd never authorized. Uh, I Also, if you, by the way, if you, if you still have a home phone, if you're one of the dinosaurs, look on there, look at all the taxes you're paying. You're probably paying $12, $15 a month in taxes on a phone line. But uh, that being said, the while the VOIP lines don't have all that junk on them yet, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Government's not going to give up that revenue. I've been trying to convince my parents for years to get rid of a home phone. Well, if they like it, that's a small price to pay. It's 95% telemarketers anyway. Right. But at the same time, if there's an emergency, that's the one line that will work when nothing else does. Well, that's if you have a cordless, uh, if you have a corded phone. Well, anybody with a cordless phone has it on a UPS. <laughs> yeah. See, the what, what I'm thinking of now is, since we got Uverse, I I bundled the home phone, which was a landline, with it. But since you don't you you don't use it much, I got the lowest, the cheapest plan that they have, which was 200 minutes. Well, it turns out that Kathy uses it a lot sometimes to talk to her sister-in-law, to talk to her sister when they call in. And it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of minutes. So I started thinking what I, would oh. need, what I need to do is forward the number to one of the um, VoIP numbers that I have. And when it rings, it goes to another phone. And when she wants to pick up, she'll pick up on one of those lines. Nobody at AT&T can tell me yet whether when you forward the number to another number, if they charge you for minutes. I would say 80% of the times when I call in, they said, no, we don't charge for this. But 20% they do. Uh, and and that's you know it, it's it's a uh, this this will work perfect for that. This will well. I mean, I'm looking at this matrix that Steve posted, and I don't understand everything I'm looking at. I mean, this is one of the ugliest matrices I've ever seen, because it shows the 100, the 110, the 200, the 202 phone ports. One, two. The 202 is a two-line version. You'd have to have two Google Voice accounts or mm -hmm. a Google Voice and a SIP account. Internet ports. I'm not sure why you would need two internet ports. We that I would have to study. 
redundancy? Uh, well, no, I don't know. There's, there's a reason. There's, for example, USB ports. The, the 100 series do not have USB. The 200 does. All four are compatible with Google Voice. All four are compatible with SIP services. And then they have the pricing, but each of these, the first two, the, the, the 100 series, will, have, will, will take care of two VOIP services, apparently, as well as the OBTalk service, whereas the 200 series handle four VOIP lines plus OBTalk services. Don't really understand what all that means, but, uh, but I, I will look into that. It looks to me like what, uh, what uh, Charles suggested is to get the OB 200. Yeah. 59, 60 bucks. But then again, might as well get the 202 for another $15. Even if you don't use the other capability, you'll always have it. True. And it sounds like you don't have to have Google Voice. Oh, no, you can use it. See, I have VOIP services, to uh, at least one. I have several VOIP services, but, but let's be careful, too, as well. Uh, the SIP providers provide VoIP services as well, mm -hmm. but not every VoIP service provides SIP services, even though from what I understand, you guys, particularly Jorvik, tell me if I'm wrong, they are the same technology. The difference has to do with what the provider is willing to provide to us. That being said, for about the past five years, I've had a VOIP line at home, a company, in fact, it's VoIPO, the same one you have on the website, Amnon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Timothy Dick was the guy who started the company when I started looking for a VOIP service to play with years ago. He was just getting started in the business. And... I got in on the ground floor because I was paying $99 a year for VOIP service. Right. I thought it was a reasonable price. But then I went long periods of time without using it. Plus, there were some numbers that I would dial that would not ring in a real small town where my mother-in-law lived. And so I sort of lost enthusiasm for it. Then a couple of times it stopped working. I had to call into tech support. They would have to log in to the ATA and do a flash or something. So I, I really wasn't blown away by it. Then about two years ago, they, uh, they it was coming up for renewal. I decided to drop it. I felt like it was not with the cell phones and all. It just wasn't necessary. But uh, then about the next day, totally without me having any input or providing any questions or feedback or, or all at all, then what I did was uh, opened an email to find out that because I was a Pioneer member, I was grandfathered in at 49 bucks a year. That's what I've been paying for the last couple of three years is $49 a year. Well, what I found out when I started doing Rick's house show and I started looking for ways to bring telephone callers into the show, I found out uh, quite by accident that this VoIPO VOIP line also is, supports a, 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 a soft client, meaning that it's a SIP client that I could use a program like Blink being my favorite, Bria being a very good client, that I could use Blink or Bria or any number of other SIP clients to directly access the VOIP service to use mixed terms. Meaning all that, all that means is that I can start Blink and make telephone calls uh, using the VOIP service, meaning that it, I have a, an ATA over here that I can use tip and ring on that line if I choose to. I can access the same phone line using a soft client on my computer, and it, it, it works pretty well. The service has improved over time, as you would expect. I mean, it's 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 working fine. I've I've had it now for almost a year, and it's it's really good. Jorvik, uh, Mike, what is you say? The one ten has the line port, the one hundred does not. What is the line port? Well, wait a minute. The OB OB one ten line port is used to bridge calls with a landline and a VOIP service. If you do not have a landline, get the OBI one hundred, two hundred, or two. I still don't know what the line port does. Apparently, you don't need it. 
I, I don't understand what that does. And once, I mean, I understand what the, everything else is, but I really don't, well, I don't know what the second internet port is for unless you use the thing as a router. No, I think the line port is for like a standard phone line. For no, they all have that. They all have a telephone jack for a standard phone line. That would, That's called the phone port. Are you looking at this matrix? No, I'm not. Let me look. Is the link in here? Oh, behind matrix. Here we go. If you give up your POTS line, you won't need it. Line port. Are you saying, Charles, that the line port connects to your existing POTS line? By the way, do you know what POTS stands for? Using a supplied RJ11 telephone line cable connected, uh, connect the OBI line port to an active analog. Oh, it's the pass-through. The pass phone, through. Okay, got the it. The phone goes in the phone port, and then the line is to your handset. I think. Right, makes sense. But what? Okay, so then yeah, so if you don't have the line port, then you can use the client, I guess, or something to answer the phone. My, my guess is that it probably allows you to switch between your standard analog phone line and your SIP service or your VoIP service. It's it puts two lines on the phone. Yeah, so that would be my guess. Connect the OBI line port to an active analog telephone pots line jack. No. It says you collect the line port to the jack. Right, to the line port jack. So then what's the phone port? The phone is where you plug your telephone in. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, the line is where your phone comes in. Yeah, that's a pass-through for your pots line. And Merle and Charles are right. Pots is plain old telephone service. There we go. That I just typically means copper phone line. I went to their page there and it's got all their features. It looks like a night a neat neat device. I mean, again, for right now, assuming we're at the point where Google Voice should have already announced whether it was going to continue to be free, they usually go by the calendar year. They're certainly not obligated to do that. Maybe they have announced it. If anybody can find it, let me know. But I'm gonna to have to get one of these. I mean, what the heck? It's not. It ain't nothing. Who cares? That's nothing. It's nothing I mean, seventy-five bucks. That's nothing. That is nothing. The question is how well it will work. I have, like with Rick's show, I have a number in Tennessee, a local number in Tennessee where he is, so that I can log in through Google Voice and and take calls on that phone number. If if I choose to do so, the disadvantage is that it 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 ties up another browser. Mm hmm. Yeah. They uh, who was it? Uh, somebody. Uh, yeah, Mike. They the May fifteenth, twenty fourteen date came and went as to Google Voice blocking the Obihide devices, and. Um, they, uh, from what I understand, Google Voice never actually blocked any of the devices, even though they announced they would no longer allow them to connect. They still worked. Ultimately, they were able to work out a deal with between OBHI and Google Voice. I, I don't know why Google Voice would want to provide home telephone service for free. I go back to a prediction I made about four years ago that at some point in time, Internet uh, will Google's going to provide free internet to the whole country? You know why? What? What? I didn't hear what you said. You said? Uh, did you say you know why? What are you doing? Pulling an Amnon? No, I I didn't hear what you said. I said I made a prediction. I heard that part, and then I heard what did you say after that? Did you say Do I? You know why I predict Google is going to provide the internet to the country for free? I don't. That's what I thought you said, but I wasn't sure. You're supposed to say no. Why? I said no. I don't know. Then they own the internet. True. Who would not take one gig internet for free? True. I have not tweeted Amnon. But I will. Just for you. 
<clears throat> Mike, it says that it's GV Google Voice compliant, but from what I understand, it's the only device that Google Voice allows. That may not be correct. I don't know that that's true. Who cares? I mean, at that price and the company is, is there and they're apparently successful, that's what's good. That's what it's all about. Yep, there you go. Uh, 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 uh. The, 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 that, that's how we do it. All right, where was I? Mike, do you think we can go into our um our audio streaming thing a little bit? If you want to, doesn't matter. People here are interested. Some people here are interested in that sort of thing. So um, I'm gonna so I'm bringing back on the radar next Saturday morning, and uh, for the longest time, I did a an well not for the longest time for a few weeks, months ago I did the audio stream on Mixler. Um, when it was at that point, it was totally free and unlimited, right? You could stream for as long as you want, mm -hmm. as many times as you wanted. Um, Correct. Because their client is really nice. It's not like a broadcasting client. You type in your username and password. You type in the name of the show, type in like the or the category or whatever, and then you're broadcasting. And they change that now so it, uh, you only can broadcast on the free account up to an hour, which is fine for me, but sometimes my show runs longer than an hour, and I don't want to start the audio stream right when we start the show because the show normally runs an hour. Um, so I'd have to either buy a free account or cut the audio stream off, and it's just something I'd have to work around. Um, so I went to look for some type of IceCast server, um, which is another streaming, uh, or Sh IceCast or Shoutcast, which is another, uh, like, I guess, a way to stream. Uh, and I there was there's a few options, and I found one. Uh, I believe it was called Free Shoutcast or something like that. Let me pull S -H -O -U -T -C -A dot S T. S H O U. Yeah, there it is. Um, here we go. I posted. I think I did. We do this last week. I don't recall, but it doesn't hurt. Oh, quickly. Um, no, because we set it up after the show last week. So quickly, um, this is what they have available, and this is a, this is Shoutcast or Icecast, which is not user friendly stuff. This is something you have to configure within a panel. But it's powerful. It is extremely, it is very powerful. It's not, not Mixer where you type in your name, type in the name of the show and you're broadcasting. You have to use a broadcast client. Um, you have to configure Centovacast, Auto DJ, uh, stuff like that. And the nice thing that they offer is uh, they offer a free plan. And that's uh, 50 megabytes of Auto DJ, which uh, is that you can upload 50 megabytes worth of audio regular audio, and um, it'll just kind of loop back when you're not broadcasting. Uh, so that's available. Two gigabytes of monthly bandwidth, which is, uh, you know, if, two, if you have a bunch of people listening, as much as they can listen under two gigabytes, you can have 30 listeners concurrently, uh, which for most people I don't think will be any problem. You get access, which is actually nice here, access to the free, uh, or access to the Centovacast panel, which isn't free. So I'm not sure how they're doing that, but Centovacast is a license fee, uh, and I guess they're they're waiving that somehow. You get your options between Shoutcast version 1 or 2 uh, and or Icecast, um, and your max broadcasting is 96K, and that's totally free. Um, so if you're looking to do audio along with video, something that you can play in an HTML5 player, something that'll work on mobile, uh, definitely check this out. And if you want to, uh, you know, have a little more, you know, 128K or whatever, it's only like $4 a month. So that's an option. Okay, right. Merle, uh, yeah, that's good. If you guys have any questions about that, ask it, because we've spent quite a bit of time investigating this stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty good stuff. Um, so that the, box for twenty nine ninety nine, you can find it. I mean, what Charles is saying, that's the same box on Newegg? Yeah, he, he, periodically they'll run sales on it. Okay. All right. Uh, Nick, it's already there. All right. Sounds good.
Mike, did you did you tweet? I did. Okay. I need to order business cards for on the radar. Um, Vistaprint.com. I, 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 that's who I was using. Um, do you think it's important for me to get front and back? No. Okay. You know why? Why? Don't know that I agree or disagree. Just what somebody taught me years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Rule of thumb is never give out a business card unless you write something on it. Interesting. The okay, one that... The Craig Digital Design ones, one that I have is front and back logo. I, I mean, to me, people, like, I've got a whole stack of cards here. I rarely look at the back of a card. Yeah. But if it's got something written on it, it's more likely I'm going to hold on to it as a reminder than if it's just a business card or I can get the information off the Internet. Mm -hmm. Well, we're probably going, Jake and I are probably going to PAX in Boston, which is a gaming con. Uh, convention, so need some cards for yep, that. Make make cards for sure. <clears throat> All right, uh, Burl, the you are incorrect on one assumption here, based on what I've read. The you're saying here the 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 text that you quoted, the line port is not for using the house wiring for other phones, that actually works on the phone port. You have to disconnect your home telephones at the network interface, which is on the side of the house. There's a disconnect out there. You disconnect your internal phone wiring from the telephone company. Then since it's in parallel, you can plug the phone jack on the OB High device into any phone jack. It will then light up all the phones in the house assuming you have more than one. Right. And that's how that works. So it's not a problem there. The the line port is a from what we were able to determine, it seems the consensus that the line port allows you to pass through. Let's if you have the one ten and you keep your home phone, you connect your home phone to the phone port to the line port on the one ten. And somehow this is the part I don't understand. Somehow then you are able to switch between your VOIP line and your home phone line using the ATA, the 110. And you can keep your plan. <clears throat> and if, your doctor. If you like it, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was uncalled for. <laughs> no, that was good, Nick. <laughs> I learned from the best. Um... Get a Mac. <laughs> a major UK bank's concern over data collected by Apple Pay is reportedly stalling negotiations to launch the mobile payment service in the country by the first half of 2015. The Telegraph reports that at least one of the UK's biggest banks is uncomfortable with the amount of personal and financial information Apple wants to collect about its customers. Apple has been adamant about its approach to collecting users' data via Apple Pay. P Apple Pay. We are not in the business of collecting your data, said Apple executive right. Eddie Q, Q when introducing the service in September. So when you go to the physical business and use Apple Pay, Apple doesn't know what you bought, where you bought it, or how much you paid for it. The transaction is between you the merchant and your bank. <laughs> and I, I think he missed finishing it. All we getting from it is your social security number, your <laughs> your account number, yeah. and your PIN. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but trust uh, us, we would never geez. do anything with those. Amazing. We are not in the business of collecting data. Right, but it just happens. Mm. Yeah. I don't just... intend to kill people, but somehow they end up dead. On a quick side note, keeping everybody up to date with the most recent stuff, uh, Bitcoin is hitting the garbage right now. So if yeah. you'd like to buy, this is your time to do it. It's down to 265.52. Um, so, yeah. What do you think the reasoning for that is? No clue, but it's tanking out. Well, there there has been some fraud uncovered in it from what I understand. Maybe. 
but it's it's buy 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 if you're looking for it because it's probably gonna shoot right back up. Two hundred sixty, you're saying? Yeah, two sixty five. And how high did it get? Two thousand? Uh, yeah, at one point, but I mean, within the um earlier this week, it was three hundred twenty. So I mean, it's 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 tanking. Yeah. Well, real quick. I have a good friend who is, I could not get him to ignore it. I tried and tried to get him to ignore it, and and he did make some good points. There are some big companies accepting Bitcoin for payment now. Yeah, Dell's doing it, right? Dell, I believe, like Newegg or Amazon, some of the big guys are accepting it. I think Newegg is doing it. Maybe Lenovo or somebody. But I guess when you get it, you have to cash it as soon as you get it. Oh, it's, it's a risk. It's just like uh -huh. stocks. Yep. Except you really don't have them, and you have to have a key to yeah. get them. Yeah. You don't I'm know sorry, I know too many hackers, and like Sean, I just don't. I'm not gonna go there. It's it's interesting. Um, Mike, I need the the uh, uh, the introduction to this story talking about Sean. Sean's uh, recommendation for a computer. Get a Mac. A post at iFixit explains how one user with a failing MacBook Pro fixed it. Ha, ha, ha. What a joke. <laughs> These things don't fail. They just work. By baking it in the oven. The device had overheating issues for months, reaching temperatures over 100 Celsius. When it finally died, some research suggested the extreme heat caused the logic board to flex and break the solder connections. The solution was to simply reflow the solder, but that's hard to do with an MBP. MacBook Pro. Oh. Instead, <laughs> I cracked open the back of my laptop, disconnected all 11 connectors and three heat sinks from the logic board, and turned the oven up to 340 <laughs> Fahrenheit. I put my $900 part on a cookie sheet and baked it for seven nervous racking minutes. I wonder where he got the recipe. After it cooled, I reapplied thermal paste, put it all back together, and cheered when it booted. It ran great for the next eight months. The laptop failed again, and another brief vacation into the oven got it running once more. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help but laugh at this. <laughs> yeah, these Mac users are an unusual sort. Okay, well, you want to hear something? I didn't do something uh, to this extent, but um, ah, oh, jeez, how many years ago is this now? I mean, this I don't probably... doubt. I don't doubt this. I mean, it's possible. No, this is, no but... I, I, I don't. This is this is probably six or seven years ago now. Uh -huh. Um, the Xbox 360, which is which was the biggest console uh, at the time had a had an overheating problem and it had it or it had this problem called the red ring where the the green lights on the front would all turn red and the device was pretty much useless mm -hmm. and one of the ways to fix this device was to wrap it in a blanket and turn it on with this red ring to the point where it would almost overheat itself mm -hmm. and that would for whatever reason fix this red ring issue and i did this five or six times before the thing finally crapped out but I, I mean i get weeks and months out of suffocating this thing no clue what it did but it worked every time i love so, it. <laughs> not to not to the extent of throwing it in the oven but a similar just kind of like make i mean the blanket was almost on fire okay but that's a different issue i'll tell you where i take issue with this article that amnon's reading okay <laughs> and mac users they're not the most technical people so they don't get it but and i understand that but what what they're talking about is is i if i understood amnon correctly he said something about they were known for not having or or for having cold solder joints and it was difficult to reflow solder one of these boards well i mean he was just saying that it, the that it, he was told that it overheated and broke solder joints right all right so, so what he he's saying is that 
in his little mind by putting it in the oven for 375 degrees for seven minutes, he reflow soldered the board, mm. except so that these things have uh, lead-free solder on them, which only melts at 800 degrees. Interesting. Right. But I, makes, I'm not but saying it, there's not a heat-related issue that might not have been impacted by that, but the, the suggestion that he did, he touched up reflowed solder by yeah. putting it in a 400 degree oven is rather mackish. I love what the guys in the chat say. <laughs> Merle's saying that's a new version of the apple pie. <laughs> and Tim, it was half baked. <laughs> uh, you see that that's that's it's worth it right there. Yeah, take it to Apple and talk to one of their idiots or one of their geniuses. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're the same thing, fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they just work. Exactly, Mike. Oh, I don't understand. And if they just work, why don't they have a lifetime warranty? And, and why do they have a repair department? Never mind. This is like the story with the lifetime light bulbs that they sell to garages. With a one-year warranty, and I no, it's a lifetime, lifetime life, light bulbs, and I I bought a box. It was you know the, when it's always like something that the school for the blind or whatever. It's like charity. Yeah. But then the next year when they <laughs> when they called, want to send me another box? And say I don't need it. This is gonna last a lifetime, and that's it. And they said, "I don't remember what they say, but that's exactly what I mean. I it it was it was ridiculous." All right, but it, it, their their excuse is you go back to them with a bad bulb, and and you said it has lifetime warranty, right? But it died now that's dead. No, yeah. <laughs> its life is <laughs> its over. Life is over. It lasted its lifetime. All right. Who is the measuring life? And one more thing about Apple. Oh no. <laughs> iOS 8 has had its share of problems, and now we can no throw way. one more on the pile. A and lawsuit. Then, can you stop being like I this? I know. This is ridiculous. We're just what? taking this show off into the woods that talking leave. about Apple. Goodbye. I'll see you guys next week. It's yeah. fun. It's a lie. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. All right. Oh, so that, that lawsuit about not enough storage is not real. I mean, you, you researched it? Is that what you're saying, Mike? No, I'm just saying that apples just work, and for you to make fun of them is just oh, not fair. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That's the joke. Yeah, You're but here's two plaintiffs. Joke. Two plaintiffs have filed a suit claiming their 16-gig iPhones and iPads don't actually come with 16 gigabytes of storage. And iOS 8 takes up too much space, and Apple should make that clear in case we are all idiots who don't get the operating system, do use storage. And I didn't, I, didn't, I, I didn't look at it the way that Nick explained it last night when he said, no, they do have 16, but the operating system. What was your other, you, you, you had another example of uh, uh, hardware that came with a certain amount of memory, but then it uses. No, I just said, I, I think it's a legitimate issue. It's, you, you market, Apple markets a 16 gigabyte device. And with their operating system that takes up five or six gigabytes, you don't have anything left. It's a, it's definitely an issue. I'm not saying it's a lawsuit, but people don't yeah. understand that. This is like the the early, um, or even even current ones, but people don't use it like that. When when you get buy, get a motherboard or computer that has an onboard video, mm -hmm. it uses. I mean, you can adjust how much memory you want to give the video the portion video, of right. it in the BIOS, yeah. and it takes it away. So when, then you go and you look how much memory I have in the computer, and you see it's not 4 gig, it's 3 gig. Well, how come? Well, because you gave the video 1 gig. Yeah. And that's kind of the same thing here. Mike, can you look at oh. Skype quick? Can I look at what? Can you look at Skype quick? I sent you something. I did. Oh, okay. And? Um, 
I don't really like the color combination and it's a good start, but it really doesn't tell who you are and what you do. Okay. So I right, fix it. Okay. I, I don't think the green and the gray go together. Well, all righty. But I mean, the, the overall design I like now this, this business card has what's called a bleed on it, which means that the printing goes all the way to the edge. Make sure that when you, that the company you choose to print these can handle the bleed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Vista Print. Yeah, no, I know for a fact Vista can. Vista, okay. uh, Vista Print can. Yeah, I mean to me, just looking at this, if you said I love this color combination, uh, the radar gaming at top should be the same green as the background of the logo. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll just do that then. But I, I'm not sure. It would just it doesn't it doesn't light me up. Let's say that. Interesting. Okay. Um, here's another interesting story. I mean, we, we're just getting into, well, before you do that, Brent makes a good point here in that often you see a, a PC that won't boot. I've got one now that will not boot. Uh, I have two of them that are problem with it, but one that will not boot. And he says he always checks to make sure that pins on a USB port are not bent and shorting out. That could definitely cause a problem for booting, and I, I'm gonna, I've got one. I don't wait a minute. How would you bend a pin on a USB? Oh, port? I've seen them. Yeah, he's right. No, the, on the the motherboard ports where it's just like the three prongs. They they people stick in you know in in a way that they don't. They push it hard, maybe backwards. So I don't know how they do it, but I had to go in and and stretch it back out, and either either that or actually break that specific connector just so the machine would work and plug that USB, it's not going to work anymore. But at least the computer is working. So, yeah, it happens. I have to keep an eye on that. I've got a, a couple. I've got a laptop. i got a couple of laptops. Normally I can fix them, but I used to spend an inordinate amount of time fixing these things, and I'm, my patience is, has declined quite a bit. I'm not as interested in it as much as I was. The other one of the first things that you do when a computer is not doesn't boot is just take the memory out and put it back in. Reseat the memory. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got a problem with with one uh, a computer that I really wanted to get going. It's an old laptop, but believe it or not, a Pentium Four with two gig of memory will work perfectly as a cart machine using Jingle Palette to play audio. Yeah. I mean if you're if you're doing a, a show and you want to have an audio machine that does dedicated to playing audio, a Pentium four is more than enough to, to work perfectly. I use mine when I use Jingle Palette now it's on a Pentium four. Mike, another thing that people seem to overlook is tablets. If you've got an iPad, there's apps for that. If you've got Android, there's apps for that too. If you're doing very minimal not, I mean you're doing more advanced jingle stuff, but for little sound bites, you can get away with a tablet and you know, a little stand for it. Yeah, they and there are some some of these instant play applications available for the tablets. I don't know what they are for the iPad. I have a Kindle Fire. I'm told there's one for that. I don't know what it is. I haven't tried it because I mean I'm, I like computers, but I I have over the last couple of months come to the opinion that it's better to have two monitors on one computer than it is to have two computers with one monitor each. I agree 100%. And because of the, the because I mean I'm sitting there using 2% of the CPU on this ma main computer, literally 2% of this computer. I'm thinking about putting four monitors on it and doing everything on it and just hope really? like heck it doesn't crash. That's what I see that's it's good and bad. It it's great when it everything is up and running but you have a problem with your computer, you're you have no computer now. I mean you do, but nothing set up. I've got a problem with a mouse. I bought a wireless mouse, mm -hmm. a Logitech M510. Is it okay. just wi wireless or is it Bluetooth? It's wireless. Okay. It worked, and it's the same one I use at the office. It worked great for quite a while, and then over the last couple of weeks, it started getting sticky. You move the mouse, but the cursor doesn't move on the computer. Last night I disc I took it out of the computer and installed a 
a separate USB mouse, which so far has not exhibited the same behavior, indicating Did to you? me that it's not an overloaded USB bus, nor is it likely an issue with the computer. Did you change the batteries? I haven't done it yet. Um, that's because, that's, that's well, the kind of thing that I, I mean, since I use the mouse so much here switching, it'll get to the point I know that it's going bad because I'm I'll... I'm going to check them right now. How long do your batteries last? About two months, three months. But that's the first thing. I, I at this point I know it it does it it works half half of the time. And if you turn it over, you know how it goes bright and drops back. This one does not. Oh, you can't even see the light on this one. Okay. But I I, I doubt that fact, may be that may the be the problem, Mike. The batteries. I did check the batteries. It's not the batteries. And again, it's the same one I use at the office. I've used it over. Oh, oh, it's over the six. same, the same actual mouse or the same model. Yeah, same model. Okay, yeah, but it's a different mouse. But it, uh, but the one at the office I I've used for six eight months with no new batteries. Huh. But I'm going to check it right now. I'm pretty sure the bat. I'm pretty sure I did this. I had I had an interesting situation with batteries last week. Yep, batteries are good. Maybe the mouse is defective. It's possible. They're cheap enough. Not this one. Well, I don't know why you're buying expensive ones for. Because I deserve it. Okay. Um. I uh, we, we were walking up to a chirping, um. Smoke. Detectors, detector. So find out what it was and change the battery. Glad you said and, that. And I've got that uh, that case in the office where it stores different size batteries. All right. Went back to bed. About half an hour later, beep. So oh, come on, another one? No, it was the same one. So I took it down and checked the battery. A 9-volt battery at 7 volts. I said, okay, I guess it was a bad battery. So I took another one and checked the voltage. 7 volts. <clears throat> Out of, I had two boxes of 9-volt batteries, copper top, I think with 8 in each. And 3 o'clock in the morning, I took them all out and checked them. And out of the 16 batteries, only four were good. Now, yes, they've been sitting in the box for about two or three years. But when you buy batteries in bulk, I mean, you know, you, you say, okay, yeah, here's a good price. I'm going to buy it, and the, the expiration date is good. And you can't take it back and say after two or three years and say something is wrong. Well, it so, depends. So then I started checking the other batteries. I mean, I have two boxes of double, I mean, triple A's. And I took them out. And when I took them out, the bottom of the box had a bunch of, what do you call it, that salt-like stuff that comes out of the battery. The, you know, it, it, it crystallizes. You know what it is, Mike. What is it? It leaks. Yeah, and a bunch of them were bad. So... And I don't know. I, I don't think I ever ran into this problem before. So um. So here's the question: Where do you dispose of alkaline batteries? In the trash. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I I still have it in a box. I tried. To, I've got a whole box of batteries to throw away. Yeah. I started looking to find out where to throw them away. And it turns out that no one recycles alkaline batteries. They only recycle rechargeable batteries. And um, you if you go to the town of Cary or Wake County recycling page on the website to find out where to get rid of these batteries, they want you to drive them out to Holly Springs, which would be about a 20-minute ride for me. That ain't going to happen. And the guy, I called the guy at the, at the at the town and asked him. I said, "Where am I supposed to put these batteries?" He said, 
trash can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of them don't know what they're talking about. Well, he says that the alkaline batteries are not really a hazard, which is why they're not overly concerned about it. That's different from what I understood the case to be. As far as I know, they've got mercury and some other stuff in them. It's, it's a bunch of crap. I certainly wouldn't want leaching into the drinking water. But well, maybe it's not as bad as I was originally told. I know that's shock. The reason I'm saying it, they don't know what they're talking about is not because of this only, but when Kathy's mom passed away, she had a whole bunch of medicine in in her apartment. Yep. And we put it all in the bag and called the city and said, okay, what do we do with this? Say, flush it down the commode. No, they didn't. They did too? Mm. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They really don't. Probably if we called an hour later, somebody else would have said, oh, do with this such and such and such and such. Let's get back to smoke alarms for a yeah. second. Yeah. I went out a couple of years ago, bought all new smoke alarms. Right. Not one of them lasted more than 13 months. As far they as the battery or as far as the detector itself? Yes. They, How do you, they started beeping from yeah, low battery. Right. I put new batteries in them. They still beep. Interesting. I, I, we have hours for years and years. Me too. And before this. Chain, changing. Which one are these? I mean, do I, tell. That's what I was thinking because I was in Lowe's yesterday or day before. I was getting ready to go ahead and buy new ones, and I was of the impression that the ones made by First Alert were the garbage. Hmm. And I just now picked up one of the bad ones, and it's made by Kitty, K-I-D-D-E. Yeah, that's what we have. Well, they're garbage. Interesting. And what was bizarre is the one with this. This one is the one in the main hallway, and which has it's dual power. It has AC and battery, mm -hmm. and it still beeps even whenever the AC is connected and the battery's weak. Well, I, I would expect it to. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, well, I understand. So. I mean, it needs to let you know when the battery is low. And I'm going to throw these in a the trash can. I don't trust them. Smoke detectors or batteries? The smoke detectors. They don't have any batteries in them right now. No. Oh. And the prices on batteries. I mean, uh, because I buy a bunch, I, I haven't bought any in the last two years or so. I mean, nine volts are anywhere from a dollar fifty to six dollars a battery. They're cheaper than that at Costco. Oh. Didn't think about checking there. Normally I Because just... someone did a, a a test on batteries to find out the whether generic alkaline batteries are any good. Mm-hmm. And um, well, Brent says Kitty is made in Mebane. Actually, they're made yeah. in China. No, they're supposed to be made in ja in Mebane. Okay, well, then we need to contact them and to take this what? made in China what? sticker off oh, the okay. back. Oh, okay, well, never mind. So you, okay. that was, the, the, the factory is in Mebane, but that's interesting that it says made in China. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so about the batteries, the alkaline uh, generic. Yeah, they... This, this somebody did some independent testing for life and so forth about whether the Duracells were really any better. There were some subtle differences between brands, but the reality was, as far as generic batteries are concerned, the at that time the Costco Kirkland brand tested every bit as good as the Everettis and the Duracells. Hmm. I went over to Costco a couple of days ago particularly to get some D-cell batteries because I was completely out of them, only to learn that Kirkland does not have C and D-cell nor 9-volt batteries. All they carry at the moment is Duracell. But for AA's and AAA's, the Kirkland batteries seem to be about the best deal going. I buy them by the box. And do you remember the pricing on the other ones? No, I don't. Hmm. Huh. Uh, it's a pain. I mean, I, I'm not a an environmental wacko by any stretch of the imagination, but anything like batteries that have a bunch of caustic garbage in them, if if they can 
recycle that and not put that crap back in landfills. I'm in favor of that. So movie buff wants to know if we are excited for CES this year. Nope. Nope. Are you movie buff? Are you going? If you are, you can go out and see Todd. So what? Mm -hmm. Let's finish up this this best smoke alarm thing. What brand do you have, Amnon? The Kitty or the, the, the First Alert? The Kitty. Well, and and it's 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 been working fine for I know that you're supposed to only have them for five years or something like that. Um. Every now and then I'll I'll I mean some of them been there maybe ten years. Every now and then I'll go and take a. Uh, match, light a match and blow it out and put it under there and it'll it'll come on. So I know that it's working. Uh, well, I've seen people use them for egg timers. Never mind. Um, I'm looking on Costco, 9-volt, 8-unit, 2-plus pack. So that means 16 of them are $16. Buck a piece. Yeah. That's what I recall is they were about a buck a piece. But these are door cell. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're as good as it gets. There's a lot of fiction with that stuff as well. But Right. Door cells, from what I, I know, are about as good as they get. No, that's good. I agree. Just don't buy ten years worth supply at one well, time. Well, not ten month. years, but I mean, you know, you you figure you go through about eight of them in a year. You buy two, three boxes. No, you buy one box of sixteen. Oh, because I I would go over to uh, the uh, the television station here has. Each year they have this, the UNC, the television station, they have this begathon where they beg for all this money for four weeks. Right. They they have a lot of people on the air using wireless mics, and at the beginning of every, twice a day, they change the batteries in the wireless mics because they don't want a chance of them going out on the air. They throw out a lot of 9-volt batteries that are really, some of them are, are perfect, and I've been... Uh, several years, they've given me a few handfuls of them that I use for non-critical stuff, and and they work well, and they have a lot of life left in them. But I, or something that's critical, like a smoke detector, I wouldn't use them in that. I couldn't believe it. I mean, searching on on uh, eBay for bulk, and a lot of people are selling used nine volt batteries. It's like, come on. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I'm glad to see Vistaprint support is pretty good. Why? Because well, I had to contact their support because they there was three options to continue, and all three of them were with a letterhead that they charge you six dollars for. Mm. Rip off. So what was the solution? I contact them, told them to cancel, or they can cancel the entire order. So they canceled the letter six dollars for letterhead. Or return address labels. Stupid. What is it, a forced add-on? Yeah, it's a it's like a, yeah, it's a forced add-on. There's three options. This says accept. It says accept and continue. One and none of them excludes the letterhead. No, there's a little there was a little thing at the bottom left-hand corner that said no. But oh, there was you three, just didn't you, see it. No, because there were, yeah, because there was three accept things that I was like, Tricky. oh okay. Trickery. So, so it's your fault. Yeah, well, the last time I'll do business with them. Oh, they're, they're trembling. Nick, you want to do the specials? Yeah, sure. Um, hold on a second. I get this thing open. And just for anybody wondering, Stuart Scott, the ESPN anchor, uh, passed away this morning. Just for a quick note. Um, all right. So specials, left hand side of the website. 
There's a PDF there. I'll post a link in chat. I know Merle's ready. He's definitely ready for these specials. Um, so let me open my local copy here. And we get going. All right, so filling in for Spence this week. Here are Mix. our specials. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give this a try and uh, and we'll see what happens. So uh, started off like he does Office Max and Office Depot. Uh, they're, they're the same company now, uh, surprisingly enough. And uh, with their first deal right here, it's an HP touchscreen 15-inch laptop with a Core i3 processor, a 15.6-inch screen, 4 gigabytes of memory, and a 500 gig hard drive. It does run Windows 8.1, and that's 399. Save 150 bucks on that. The next deal is a Toshiba Satellite C75D laptop with an AMD A6. 8 gigabytes of memory, a 17.3 inch screen, and a 750 gigabyte hard drive, and that's 399. Save 150. That's actually not a bad computer right there. With that 8 gigs of memory, is going to be pretty quick. And if you throw an SSD in that thing, uh, it'll be even quicker. Uh, this is again an Office Max Office Depot uh, PNY 32 gigabyte USB 2.0 flash drive, not 3.0. That's 1499. Save 25. They've got an Acer 23 inch LED monitor. $129, not a bad price on that. I've got a similar one. I think mine's a 25 though. Um, and the Acer monitors are actually pretty nice. So looking for that, that's at Office Max. Uh, a Dell Inspiron 3000 with an i3. Again, Windows 8.1, $399, save $100. Uh, and a Lenovo Android tablet with a keyboard case. This is a full keyboard case, uh, not one of these flimsy plastic ones. The tablet actually sits on this case. Um, and it's upgradable to Android KitKat. That's $199. It's got a front and rear camera and eight hours of battery life, and that's uh, $199. Save 100 on that. And uh, they're doing their big print event. All their printers are on sale, and when you buy a printer, you get 10% back in rewards. Uh, so if you're part of the rewards program and you're looking for a printer, they've got an Epson uh, printer for uh, $89.99. It's an Epson Expression XP620, 30-page um, auto document uh, feeder, and uh, it's a 10-color uh, printer. And another printer they have is the HP Envy 7640, uh, and that's $149. That's an all-in-one wireless print, copy, and scan. And then they've got a HP OfficeJet Pro 6230, and that's a wire, just a wireless printer, 35-page. Uh, auto document feeder that's seventy nine dollars save twenty. Moving over to Staples and uh, this is a this is one that I made sure that I got because uh, I think a lot of people are interested in this. Uh, this is a Toshiba laptop. Not the biggest fan of Toshiba, but it's running Windows Seven Professional, and this was one of their front page deals. Uh, so this is a Toshiba Core i three, uh, three forty nine ninety nine save two hundred fifty, but it's running Windows Seven. So if you're if you're looking for Windows Seven this might be the computer for you. It's got a 15.6 inch screen, six gigabytes of RAM, and a 750 gigabyte hard drive. And uh, they've got their, they've got a plan going on right now where you can get a minimum of $30 instantly uh, with Staples eCash when you recycle a qualifying laptop. So uh, check on that if you're going to be uh, picking a laptop up there. They've got another HP laptop. It's Core i3. Again, uh, Windows 8.1 on this one, uh, $499. Uh, I'm sorry, $449.99, save $150 after their easy rebate, 15.6 inch, 6 gigs of RAM, 750 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, that's uh, there at Staples. And another Toshiba laptop. Uh, this is a uh, this is an Intel uh, Windows 8.1 on this one as well, $249.99, save $130. They've got SD cards. So I'm surprised the price of these have really fallen. I bought one not too long ago. It was definitely more than this, a SanDisk uh, 16 gigabyte. SD card, uh, $12.99, save $27. That's a good price on that. An Epson uh, Workforce printer. This is not part. This is not the Office Max Office Depot big print event, but it's still on sale. Save $70. It's a Workforce uh, WF2540 wireless all-in-one, and that's regularly $129. So uh, go take a look at that. They've got an HP 20-inch widescreen LED monitor. $99. Not the biggest monitor, but uh, definitely good for maybe a secondary monitor. That's $99 there. And then they've got an all-in-one HP 18.5-inch desktop with an AMD E1. 
running Windows 8.1, that's 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, and that's $339.99. Save 160 bucks. Moving over to Best Buy, uh, where they've got a Asus 2-in-1 13.3-inch touchscreen laptop. That's a Core i3, 6, giga, 6 gigabytes of RAM. And this is one of these ones that flips kind of backwards, and that's uh, $529.99. If you can see the picture there, that's pretty cool. This is a this is not a bad laptop here. I'm actually may, might be looking at picking this thing up. This is an HP 15.6 inch laptop with an AMD E1 series processor, uh, four gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, 249.99. Uh, and this may not be the fastest computer in the world, but if you were to throw a uh, about 120 gigabyte SSD in that thing, I'm sure it would be much quicker. Uh, and I'm in the market for something like that, so uh, that's a Best Buy 249.99. They've got a SanDisk. 8 gigabyte cruiser flash drive, it's 2.0, not 3.0, $4.99, save 13 bucks. A Logitech MK520 wireless keyboard and mouse combo pack, uh, this is $34.99, save $25, those are wireless. And a Brother wireless all-in-one black printer, $69.99, save 30 bucks on that. They've got a Lenovo H50 desktop with a 23-inch IPS LED monitor, that's a nice monitor, those IPSs are good. Five ninety nine nine, or I'm sorry, five ninety nine ninety eight. Save seventy bucks, and that comes with a keyboard and mouse as well. And they've got a WD MyBook four terabyte external drive. That's a USB three drive. One thirty nine ninety nine. Save fifty on that. And then a Sony PlayStation Eye camera for thirty nine ninety nine. That's save twenty, and that's at Best Buy. There we go. I I always wondered about those that flip over the 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 uh, like they they become a tablet. Mhm. I never used one, but I'm wondering Neither if when I. you did you ever use it? No, I didn't. I I'm not I, I don't know I, how they work. I wonder if when you flip it over like that if it disables the keyboard. I imagine it must. I I, I mean, that's the only thing I can think. Yeah, cuz otherwise <laughs> You put it in your lap, all hell will break loose. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's got to disable the keyboard. Yeah. Once that, once like the threshold of the monitor thing moves over. Yeah, something like if you go over so many degrees. degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job, Nick. There we go. Seriously, now, that's very nice. It was all right. No, we, it we, was very we, good. We will, we, will, and, we will improve with time. And 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 and. How long did it take you? Uh, surprisingly, a long time. Mm -hmm. Spence puts a lot. I can now truly say Spence puts a lot of time into this every week. Yep. This was, this was not easy to do. So it's it's a truly a service for for you guys, the audience there. Well, a, don't think we don't appreciate it. Well, I I didn't I didn't realize how much time it took. I thought this was just something he threw together, and now I. I'm wrong. This it's is not a quick ordeal. You got to snapshot all the pictures, arrange them all, size them properly. But definitely that that uh Windows 7 laptop I think is a good one. People that are looking for a, a Windows 7 yep. laptop. You done you done good. Oh, well, I'm glad. You done I could, done uh, good. Glad we all right, I have another on. question. For who? Me? Everybody. Ionization versus photoelectric smoke detectors. I'm hearing, I'm reading all sorts of things. The only ones that I see in stock at Lowe's that are battery and AC are ionization. Oh, that's not true. Here's one that's photoelectric. Never mind. I'm going to get a photoelectric. Get the one that works. Well, who, who the heck knows? No, oh, well. I'm going to try a different brand. I'm going to try the first alert of this kitty. I'm not happy with it. I'm going to try first alert. This was ionization. I, I love this. If replacing the battery does not stop the chirping, replace the unit. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but but four out of four in one year. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, it may have been a bad, uh, did you buy them all at the same time? It may be I a did. Batch, bad batch. 
Uh, yeah, but whenever they go out a month out of the warranty, what difference does it make? Well, call Kitty. I ain't going to call him. I'm going to throw him in the trash can. I'm not going to waste my time. Okay. That's 60 bucks. That's nothing. All right. Okay. I don't see mine listed anyway. I-2020, uh, it's an I-2040, I-2010, mine's not listed. Oh, these are hardwired smoke and smoke carb. okay. Alert consumer fire following a power outage. Replace consumer contact. <clears throat> so, since everybody's using tablets these days. I'm not. A lot of people. Let's put it this way. Okay. So it's an interesting question. It said, is the tablet market rapidly collapsing? Mobile analytics firm Flurry doesn't come to quite that stark a conclusion, but things aren't looking too good for touch screens that don't qualify as phablets. According to Flurry's numbers, full-size tablets accounted for only 11% of new devices in 2014. That's Isn't that more than Apple? Apple's more at than, 7%. Stop yeah. dogging on them. A decline from 2013 when that form factor totaled 17% of the new device market. Small tablets experience a smaller decline, falling from 12% to 11% of new devices between 2013 and 14. Meanwhile, phablets expanded from 4% 4 of new devices in 2013 to 13% by this year. I still don't understand what phablets are. Full, full size? Um, no idea. I don't know. It's pH. Fablets. Fa um, Boy Genius Report, for its part, looked at those numbers and decided that the tablet market is doomed. Consumers happy with compact smartphones are not switching to larger iPhones for now, but former tablet buyers are. That's not to say people will stop using tablets, but the one-time theory that they would one day cannibalize all PCs looks increasingly nebulous. Um, I, I, I don't know, Nick, in your... Oh, Nick got up. I'm, I'm wondering if his generation is... Uh, Oh, phone tablets, that's what, okay. That's what phablets, phone tablets, I see. Um, I, myself, I don't see any reason to get a tablet. But uh, a lot of other things I don't get that, that people out, out there go in and snatch. I, I, I can't see any use for a tablet for me, whether in the business or here. Well, you have to have one, Elmont. Why? Because. Oh. Well. How can you come to this show and speak with authority if you have never even had one? Well, get me one. No. <laughs> I am not speaking with authority about tablets, and I'll okay. say right off the bat, I don't know much about. Kathy probably knows more about tablets than I do because she's using that Android. I have a quick question that, that I'm sure Nick can answer. He's a genius today, but he's not here. Well, I'll wait till he gets back. Yeah, probably forget what my question was. Yeah, I didn't even think to go to Target for a smoke detector. They got the same crap as everybody else. They, well, when you buy a smoke detector, it doesn't matter where you buy it. It's like a Big Mac. It doesn't matter which McDonald's you go yeah. to. I mean, it's 
this business about dual power, AC and battery, I don't even know that you need AC on them as long as the battery's I, working. No, nah, I mean, that, that's too much work because then you have no, to... No, it's pre-wired for it. The house is pre-wired for oh, it. Oh, if it's pre-wired, I mean, it's fine. I guess it's just in case... I, I mean, I can see a lot of situations where you want, unless you keep up with the batteries, where you want to have... Uh, dual power, not just wired, because the, the, a lot of fire fires, God forbid, uh, happens when we have storms that knocks out the power and people start using space heaters and fireplaces and things like that, and that's what causes fire. So you want to have one that has batteries. Yeah, I, I'm just the, the 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 original idea was the having AC as I understand it. Somebody can correct me. The original thought was by having AC power, you would be not only would you be protected against a battery failure, but you would also extend the life of the battery by not using the battery power to maintain you, the unit. And you should. I I agree. However. The the current designs are such that they get so long out of a battery that whether you have AC power or not for a unit, they're still recommending you change the battery once a year. So what difference does it make? And I would agree with that. I don't know. I don't, I don't change the batteries until it chirps. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I, I, I guess everybody's OCD about something. Yeah. And UPSs and smoke detectors chirping drive me crazier than I normally am anyway. Yeah, but I mean how much of chirping can is gonna happen before you change the battery? It's, it's gonna well, chirp. If it chirps for... at three o'clock in the morning, I'm I'm awake the rest of the night. Oh I no, well. Then what you can do is well, you can just get up and take the battery out. Or then I'm up the rest of the night. Or I can just uh, change the battery every Christmas and not have to worry about it doing it until it fails, which will be another year. I like to use everything to the last drop. Yeah, well. Don't change it on Christmas. Why? You'll forget. <clears throat> no. You have to have some, some uh, either 4th of I, July or nope. New Year's Day. I got, a I got a better one for you. All right. When you roll the clocks back. But that's yeah. twice a year. What if you say, wait a minute, I'm going to do it when I move it ahead. I'm going to do it. I don't remember. Oh, I already did it, but then you didn't do it. No, you do it when you roll. No, you decide when you, you decide you either do it when you move the clocks forward or move them back. We do ours when we move the clocks back every year. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do it on 4th of July. There's only one 4th of July. There are two time changes. Yeah, but you, well, what if, you, what if you're not home for 4th of July? I'm always home. So okay. go ahead and ask Nick what you were going to ask. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I told you I wouldn't remember. What was it? I told you I wouldn't remember. Sorry. What were we talking about? It wasn't about this because you said you have a no. question to ask Nick. I don't think you were going to ask Nick a question about smoke detectors or. No. No, nah, if, if, if it's important, it'll come to me. All right. Okay. It's fine. Oh, uh, Amazon, that was a little rude. I'm an expert in smoke detectors. No, just in math. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Um, I mean, even ones without batteries. Did, did I tell you that one, like about a month ago or two months ago, we, we went out and when we came up, the alarm system was beeping funny when we came in. It was three beeps instead of two. And didn't pay much attention. But then Hannah called and she said, did you guys have a fire? And I said, no. She said, well, I got a call from CPI and they said that there's a fire in the basement. So I went down the basement and, I mean, there was no, nothing was going on. I went and I looked on the uh, security system, and sure enough, 
There was a fire engine that came by, and the guys with axes came to the door and knocked on the door and went down and went around. The dogs were in the house, so they went around and they left. I guess they realized that there was nothing going on. And I said, well, why didn't they call us? Well, they did call us, but the thing is, this is so stupid. I mean, you know, you see a call coming in, it's an 800 number, and you say, forget this, this is junk call. This is how CPI call you. It just said 800 blah, 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 whatever. 800 the service or whatever? The what? They just said like 800 service? No, it just said, it just gave the number, just call our ID oh. instead of the actual name. Hey, Merle. Hey, guys, what's hey. going on? Not much. Why aren't you coming in on in the Hangout? Uh, I don't know. I just thought I'd Mike's call in. Okay. Merle's not in that. Merle's not in that group. Yeah, but I yeah. thought that Mike asked him if he's no. going. Oh. Yeah, but he's got a good point. I didn't. We didn't send him the link. But okay. this is fine. Okay. I got yeah. him. If he, so, if he hey. wants to join, I got him. Hey, oh, I, I, I got to Before you start, do you hear, yes, any, do you hear any noise? Uh, no, it sounds good. Because last time you were saying that when you called in, you heard the noise. Okay, go ahead. No, it sounds good. Well, I was just going to follow up. I don't know if you remember last week I was having a lot of computer problems, and and Mike told me to rebuild my computer, which I'm going to end up doing anyway. But I, I think I finally figured out what was going on, or I don't actually know what was going on, but I think I fixed my issue. So what I ended up doing was, or as you remember, I was having problems with, like, uh, Microsoft's media player crashing. Um, I was having issues when I was going to, like, YouTube, and the browse, or um, the videos weren't playing. It was crashing my browser. And so what I ended up doing was I basically uninstalled all my browsers. I uninstalled all my plugins for, like, Flash and uh, Java and, uh, what is it, Real Media Shock Player or whatever reinstalled all that crap and everything seems to be working appropriately. Okay. I was going to tell you to reinstall flash. <clears throat> yeah. But you know, what's funny is though, um, I've been playing with different browsers. I just, I'm still having a problem with flash. I'm sorry. Yes. With the flash player in Firefox for some reason. And I noticed a lot of people are, and it's just not working. I've uninstalled the plugin and, and installed it several times. And for some reason, Firefox, just it isn't working, but I don't use it anyway. But I, I thought it was it was kind of interesting that there are a lot of people out there having the same problem, and no one seems to know how to fix it to include you know Adobe. Get a Mac. <laughs> well, the name of the game is to fix the problem. Yeah, but I am. I As you saw last night, I'm probably going to buy a new computer because I want an i7 processor anyway, and I want to take advantage of that sound card, the Delta 1010 LT. So mm -hmm. um, thanks to Brian, um, he put together a nice little package for me, so I'll be ordering that here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Is he going to build one, it for you, or are you going to build it? I'm going to build it, but he, you know, I'm going to use his link so he can get the 4% or whatever uh, from mm -hmm. it since he took the time to do that for me. Um, and then I'll slap it all together and, and start using that as my primary computer. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. It's a win-win. Yeah, it's a win-win. So I have this third computer here, and I don't know what I'll do with it, but you know, maybe I'll use it for my podcast. What podcast? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you know, I forgot. I pod faded. I forgot. So are you going again? out to CES? Am I going out to CES? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not that dedicated of a podcaster. What about NAB? Uh, no, I'm not that dedicated of a podcaster. Oh. Okay. Whatever. I'd like to go to NAB. Well, why don't you? Um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't know. I think my my. I think my age plays against me there. Yeah. The mental thing. No, I go. I'm going out to Vegas. I, I'm not gonna have anything to do when the show floor is not on. Or I do go in the casinos. Sure. <laughs> they don't check your ID. All right. So Dave's computer tips did an article called "Looking Back at Five Fearless Predictions from 2012." Back in January 2012, I published an article that contained five predictions for future trends. You can catch up with that article at this link. 
two years down the track, and I thought it might be fun to take a look back and see just how accurate my predictions have turned out to be or not. Prediction number one, Windows 8 is set to flop. I think I may have gotten that one right. Looking back now, that may not seem like a particularly sage prediction, but you have to remember, at the time Windows 8 was a mere infant, just two months since the official release, and the jury was still well and truly out. I always thought the biggest problem for Windows 8 was to overcome was that uh, Windows 7 was and is such a darn good operating system. People are resistant to change at the best of times, and it was always going to take something very special to lure users away from their beloved XP and Windows 7. I'm pretty chuffed with my closing statement for this prediction back then, even if I do say so myself. Quote, I suspect Windows 8 will be largely irrelevant to traditional PC users, with very little upgrade activity occurring in that particular area, unquote. Even Microsoft quickly saw the writing on the wall for Windows 8, releasing the Windows 8.1 update in record time a mere 10 months later. Now as we move forward towards Windows 10, it's patently obvious that Microsoft is keen on putting as much distance between the Windows 8 fiasco and its upcoming new operating system as humanly uh, possible. <clears throat> so what about Windows 8? I mean, is uh, was he right? Um, for desktops, yes, but it's totally changed. I think it's changed the PC market. I mean, you're seeing all these like $150, $200 little Windows tablets coming out now. As a desktop operating system, it's a disaster. But it's, I think like, schools are buying these like Dell tablets now that got the nice keyboard, but you can, you know, hold down the button and detach it. I don't know. What about it, Merle? I'm not a fan of Windows 8, never have been, especially for my elderly mother who just got a new computer with Windows 8 on it. Drives me crazy. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I, I, I hate change. I think I've told you guys that before. You know, I mean, I, I hated the put, fact. What's that? Did you put Classic Shell on it? Uh, no, not yet, but I need to. Because... Just run 8.1, I'm telling you. With Classic well, Shell? Yeah. 8 point, I hated, I hate Windows 8. I run it Windows. I use Windows 8.1 on a laptop that I use for some of my weather stuff. It boots right into the desktop. I have not once gone into the Metro interface on that computer at, purposely. Accidentally, I pressed the Windows button, but not once have I had to go into that Metro interface, and I don't notice a difference at all. Yeah, no. well, I understand. A buddy of mine got a new computer with Windows 8 on it, and he was asking some questions about what to install. I told him to install Classic Shell, and it definitely made him a little more comfortable. He's older too. Um, so, I mean, in and of itself, from what I can tell, Windows 8 is not a bad operating system. It's just uh, it's just change in the UI, which a lot of people don't like. Prediction number two: Internet Explorer 10 to be hit. I don't know what that means. Internet Explorer has always enjoyed the lion's share of the desktop browser market, but at the time of making this particular prediction, old rival Firefox and relatively newcomer Chrome were slowly but surely eating away at Internet Explorer's dominance. My preferred resource for market share statistics, net market share, will only allow me to go back as far as December 2012, but even in that abbreviated period of time, IE has seen its market share rise from 54.77% to 58.94%, a quite substantial increase of 4.17%. So here's the grid that he's posted. December 2012, IE 54.77, Chrome 1804, Firefox 19.82. November 2014, Internet Explorer goes up to 58.94%. Chrome goes up to 20.57%. Firefox drops from 19.82 to 13.26%. I suspect this may be largely due to a lot of users becoming disgruntled with alternatives, Firefox in particular and deciding to give up the and de de deciding to give the updated IE 10 and 11 another go. <clears throat> so anyway, what do you think? Um, I can't I can't wait 
to see what that uh, the uh, Explorer Lite will look like. Is that their new? That's the name of the new browser, right? Yeah. I'm 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 excited for it. I think I think Microsoft can do a browser Ab- right. Absolutely. Because IE is just so antiquated. It, uh, if they come out with a modern browser like Chrome, where you sign into your account and all of your bookmarks and all of your plugins and all of your extensions sync, it's going to do great. Yeah, we'll wait and see what what they do. Well, what do you think, so, Marl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, yeah. Marl? Are you? I think you guys. I thought you guys were making fun of me for trying to get IE to work a couple of weeks ago when I was having problems with it. But no, no. We, I was I, just curious on why you were using it. Well, I mean, don't absolutely. You know, I'm not a web guy. I I, I gave that stuff up. I mean, it seems like some sites are better designed to function when users use Internet Explorer. That's the only reason I keep it around because there are some sites that just seem to work. They load faster. My user experience is better with IE. But I'm a big fan of Chrome. I don't know why. It just Chrome works. I like their plugins. Um, you know, I was talking to you guys the other day about, you know, um, plugins to read URL, shortened URLs so you, you know where it's going before you click on it. Um, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Chrome. Chrome, it just works. And uh, like Nick said, I... It's got all my bookmarks, my history. So when I use my iDevice, I, my history's there. My bookmarks are there. I go to my wife's computer. I log onto her Mac, and I've got, I've got my bookmarks and all that good stuff. So I, I'm a fan of Chrome, and I, I probably always will be. And I, I always hated uh, – I, I was always the guy who didn't like to go with the in crowd. So since IE so popular, I tried to stay away from it. I, 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 IE could that, – That's a, it's just – it's simplicity stuff. That's what it's all about for me at least. I mean, IE is a if you need it and other things aren't working, you start it. I use I use IE Firefox and Chrome interchangeably. But see, one thing I don't like about Internet Explorer is how it is so integrated into the operating system. Okay, so. Well, I mean, well, to me, that just talk. Yeah, give uh, talk a little bit more about that. I'm interested. Well, I mean, to, in order to in, to uninstall it is a task in of itself. It's not. I mean, you, you have to go into different menus and there's no uninstall. It's just, you just can't go to programs, apps, uninstall. You have to go, you know, I forget where, somewhere else because it's so integrated. It's just, it's a pain. And the fact that it's that integrated into the, the, the operating system scares me a little bit. I think there's a lot more vulnerabilities there. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm a security guy and, and, and I kind of buy into the uh, security through obscurity. So since there isn't that many people on i or on chrome i mean people are, are are i guess less apt to to create things that um would be uh you know a, a vulnerability to chrome as an ie would so i don't know it's just you know, that's me being mean <laughs> that's that's microsoft good to know No, I mean it's it. Uh, I don't know why you uninstalled it. Why uninstalled IE? Yeah. Well, because I was having problems. Remember, I mean. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's problems with IE. Leave it. Leave it alone. If another browser is working, use another browser. Um, by... Well, because a lot of times things when you install and remove programs, things get clobbered by uninstalling and reinstalling. You reestablish the order of priority of certain. Um, DLLs and drivers, you can, things of that nature. You can also go to the to the advanced and just reset IE to that no, one's not the same thing. Right. And and one thing I noticed when I uninstalled Internet Explorer, it came up with a little um there was a box that said by uninstalling Internet Explorer, it could have ad and this is me ad libbing, it would have it it may have adverse effects on other applications. Yeah, they always say that. Yeah, to me, that's a little scary. I mean, so, you know, it's just IE to me is too integrated into the operating system. And I understand why Microsoft does it, but I, I don't, I'm not sure it's necessary. So, no. Hey, Mike, you've got the <clears throat> uh, reseller plan through eBound, right? Yep. I'm looking at their new website, and apparently, this uh, this plan comes with custom name servers that you can set. Yeah, it's no big deal. 
Where, where does it let you do that? I was. I don't recall. I did it, and when I had to move some stuff around, it was a royal pain. But the only reason you'd want custom names, you have to. I don't remember how you do it. It's not real hard to do, but you have to go in and set up DNS, create your own custom name servers, then point it through your DNS. The only reason you do that is because you don't want your customers to know who where you're hosting their accounts. And yeah, I don't I'm, care. I'm I'm transparent on that stuff. I wonder how I, I do. I'm a little different. I'd rather my customers leave. I mean, yeah, just you can custom you can... name servers ns one dot dot com ns two dot dot com. I don't know where to set this. Mike, you can always do an ns lookup on the site and figure out where it's hosted. I yeah. understand, but it's it's easier for me to tell. I think it's easier for me to tell people ns one dot craig digital designs dot com than ns one dot ebound host dot com. Right, but just as if you're gonna do that, I'd get craig to craig digital designs dot net and use that for all the hosting stuff. Okay. Oh, here your account's default name servers when you create. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where to create them though. But it, I did it on mine. It was a pain because I went through several hosting companies and had to and and. If if I were just reselling web space and that was everybody else's problem to deal with it, but I don't. I I provide web space for people and I end up having to do the maintenance and all that crap on it. When we moved to a new server, I was the one who had to go in and change about twenty domains from name servers and all that crap, and it was just See, a pain. I'm gonna I'm gonna contact their support and see about that. Yeah, I'm finally done with moving all these sites from the RTP net server to my server. And that was that was a pain for about a week or two. Learned a lot about DNS. Learned a lot about mailman. But uh one of the tricks is if you're planning to move DNSs around, Nick, mm -hmm. first of all, get into yours and change the time to live to five minutes. Well, I, I won't have access. I'm not running a DNS server. It's just a name that's pointing at theirs. I, I actually use a service called DNSMadeEasy.com. You, you pay for that, though, right? Yeah, well... Uh, they may have some for free. I do pay for the account. It's cheap. I paid for like three years at one time. I can change a domain name. I can point a domain name to a new server in five minutes. So you change the time to live to five minutes on it, or you can just do it in five minutes? No, it's 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 uh, changed to, I think, ten minutes. Yeah. Normally it's I believe a day that's time to live, isn't it? It it in many cases it's two, one day or three days because there's no reason to unless you're you're host hopping. There's really no reason. Well, when you use cheap hosting companies like some of us tend to do, and these yeah. companies go out of business or or go on vacation and leave nobody there running the, the place, then you end up having to move things around. Yeah. Gene is asking, what's my latest assessment? Um, Uverse is working. What does that mean? It's, it's working. It does what it's supposed to do. It is just as stable as Time Warner. And and it I'm I'm not saying it sarcastically. Um, last week I had a problem where things. Remember, Mike, I was telling you that my upload is like seventy two k. Yeah. And um, on that machine I was using Uverse, so I was saying, "Yep, yeah, this it's a problem." Um, the uh, the modem has a battery in it. So unplugging the power, all the lights stay on. So I just plugged it back in. And later on that evening, I actually called them. I switched to, to the Time Warner uh, feed, and it was fine to do the work. But later on, I called uh, Uverse, and 
We started talking about it. He said, no, we need to fix it. I said, okay, first of all, how do I reboot your router, your modem? I mean, it has a battery, so what do I do? He said, you need to disconnect it and leave it off, offline for about 15 seconds. It, and then when you plug it in, it will start over. Okay. Um, I tried that. And sure enough, it started over, and we were talking. And it came up. I did a speed test again. Same thing. So at that point, I said, you know what? Let me try something else. So I went on another machine that was connected to it, to Uverse, and everything worked great. Came back to my machine, and it was crappy. So I apologized, and I said, look, I think the problem is on my end, not yours. Because it's working okay on that other, on another computer that's connected. I said, I'm going to have to reboot and see. So we were talking, and I rebooted, and everything was back to normal. So it was not Uverse causing the problem. The interesting thing is I called him on the number that we have bundled with Uverse. And when he told me to pull the power out, I said, so that's going to disconnect us, right? He said, that's okay. I'll just call you on your cell phone. I said, okay. So I disconnected it and waited about 30 seconds. We were still talking. He said, I said, no, it didn't, it didn't disconnect us. He said, yeah, that's interesting. I said, okay, plug it in. The second I plugged it in, it disconnected us. So that's also that that that's interesting that the uh, how how that works. He couldn't explain to me what the battery in the modem does. Um but I I suspect that it's only like for uh temporary outage like when the power flickers or whatever so it will not reboot. But uh Gene in general, I'm I'm very happy with it. This machine here that we're doing the show on is connected on Uverse now. Um, as far as the 250 gigabytes cap, <clears throat> I guess I haven't hit it yet because I never got an email from them or they never charged for it. So it it's someone fine. said they don't have any way of monitoring it. Yeah, I know. So that's what I'm saying. I guess I didn't hit it or they didn't send an email. and I don't care as long as I'm not paying more. And um, it's fine. It's nice Nice to know that, that uh, I have some kind of redundancy, especially now that RTPNet is out, so I'm going to do away with the T1. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It was main, it was mainly for that. Really? <laughs> so that will save about two hundred dollars a month. That's nothing. All right. You could just give that to somebody else. You could give that to me. Get a Mac. Um I also read something talking about uh, broadband. Um I don't know if I kept it oh yeah what every incumbent isp worse what is every incumbent isp's worst nightmare if we had to guess it looks something like the filing that google just made with the federal communications commission as the wall street journal report reports google this week told the fcc that reclassifying broadband providers under Title II of the Telecommunication Act would have a big side effect, side benefit for Google Fiber because it would give Google Fiber the same access to utility poles and other key infrastructure currently enjoyed by Comcast, AT&T, and other big-name ISPs. So I guess the FCC is reclassifying something in the about providers and if that's going to give Google Fiber 
access to those polls, then they don't need, they do, they do whatever they want. Do I understand it right, Mike? Ask the question again. I was reading something. If, if uh, the side benefit for Google Fiber is that it will give them the same access to utility polls right. and other key infrastructure currently enjoyed by Comcast, AT&T, and other big-name ISPs, does that mean that they can then come and run their cables without having to get permission from the city and all that? I'm not sure, but I, w I do know that it makes it dramatically easier. I, I'm not sure okay. if it's automatic. I was, was told by the town of Cary, one of their planners, that they really don't get it whenever AT&T wants to run lines and dig things that they really have blanket authority. They really don't have to come back to the city every time they want to do something. As far as qualifying to run those cables initially or to get into that group, there may be some qualification there, but it probably is more more uh, protocol than anything. But they would definitely have easier access. But let's not yeah. forget that with government comes taxation. Yeah. That's why the government's got to control over these telephone now. That's why they're adding six, twelve dollars a month taxes to your home phone line. So, well, I mean, it it'll be interesting to find out if uh, if Google is going to come here anyway. I'm getting tired of talking about Google and, and broadband. They, um, I don't care what anybody says. These these broadband guys who were so hot to trot whenever the government started talking about regulating it as free internet or what, what was this, what's this term they're talking about? Net neutrality. Mm -hmm. They scared them away because they know that it means the government's going to regulate it and drive the cost up and they're going to have all these major commitments and credit cards to pay off for installing all this fiber stuff and, and no way to pay it off. I mean, let's, let's look at it realistically. There, there's only a certain amount of money that's available for internet services. Who knows where the sweet spot is? The, uh, I, I mean, right now you can get a service for, what is it? Uh, 50, 50, 50, 70, 80, 89 or $99 a month from Time Warner. It would be interesting to know how many people in this area are actually paying for that service, which is the 50, 50 slash five. I have the 30-5, which I'm paying, I don't know. Is the, is the 55, I didn't think that was available to buy unless you had their signature home package. Is that, it, it, that, that was originally true, but they made it available separately. Interesting. I don't I don't see the benefit of having 50 down, to be honest with you. Well, it like depends. I've got, I mean, I've got 30, uh, let's say 35 on most days. Like, is 50 really going to do me any good? If Let's suppose that with four people in your household and... The other three are constantly watching Netflix and downloading things such that you are frequently getting long ping times and other issues associated with download. The difference between 30 and 50 could be significant. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess that's a case by case thing because personally, I don't have that issue. But I'm all for speed. I mean, the, the, the download, I, I would I would take 30, 30 any day over 100 slash 5. Right. Oh, I take 20, 20 any day. It's amazing uh, how how much the up speed changes the speed of surfing. You wouldn't think about it. Well, this is something that people don't realize. We, I don't recall that we've talked about it that much here, but like our service with thirty down, five up. If you if you do an upload at five megabits up, if you max out the upload speed, it kills your download. Yep. Which you never will max that upload anyway. Shoot. Not true. I can, I've can. i never hit it. All right. You try something that has competent servers like Dropbox or SendSpace yeah. and do a manual upload. You absolutely can max out the upload. Interesting. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not in the position where I'm using services that where I have that, like I'm uploading stuff to YouTube and archive.org right. and Daily but, Motion where it's but not. These are so busy. These, and they, 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 many of them, are either slammed on upload or they have it throttled. 
But mm -hmm. some of the other services where they don't have it throttled, it's very easy to upload at five. The other thing that you can do, for example, is that if you were to FTP something from you directly to Amnon where he doesn't have it throttled, you can very easily max the upload. Um, yeah. Nick, before I got Uverse, yeah. after the show, especially our show because it's so long, I would upload to YouTube and to Daily Motion uh -huh. and to Delta Force in order to put it on the archives on Nissan Communications uh -huh. and to for share or whatever for WLMN. And if I forgot and did them all at once, I would look at the uh, streaming machine and the red light behind the stream button will turn orange. And after a couple of seconds, it'll start blinking. Like there is not, not enough bandwidth to, to stream. So I started doing it one at a time and it was fine. Now with Uverse on this machine, it's I do it all at once and it's fine. But yeah, you can you can max the up speed easy. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm just I'm never I, I never really max upload stuff. Yeah, because and you I, don't I, and I and I notice and uh, now I, if you now if you take your show and you upload it to YouTube Mm -hmm. You're not going to max it. No, no, I know, but I've never, I never upload more than like if I have to go to, I go, I upload on the radar to, the video to two different spots. Right. I'll never upload those at the exact same time. Okay. Well, there's no it, need to, and you're exactly, right. I think it's it's probably quicker for me to do one at a time. It it is, and it and even at times if you're using the internet for other things, it's beneficial to have a throttle on your upload which a lot of a lot of services will let you do that in routers it seems to me that some of these services will allow you to to mac, uh, to control the upload speed so that you don't kill your internet and you can continue to do other things yep gigapower internet who's what company is using the name gigapower AT&T 120 a month yeah, but they they stopped rolling it in North Carolina. In Raleigh, uh, actually, in they Raleigh. just announced that they're going to, to light up all of Durham. Really? Yep. Back to you. Interesting. Yep. A guy named the comedian on DSLReports.com. Uh, apparently, he has a Bell logo. Apparently, he's an AT and T guy or knows someone or played one on TV or something, but. He said that if you're, not you're, if you're in Durham, you have reason to cheer. It was just announced that AT&T will be laying fiber to 100% of the city. The deployment has started. It will be 100% of Durham, starting with North Durham. Yeah, but they already laid it in Raleigh, and they were going to offer it to businesses and residential and all that. And when that whole talk about the net neutrality came about a couple of weeks ago, they said that they, they are stopping. They're not going to do anything before they know. Maybe something changed. Part of this is the net neutrality. Well. Which, by the way, is not neutral. <laughs> um, it's kind of like Affordable Care Act. Right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and before I forget about it, <laughs> Woot.com had some specials for Motorola modems, Doxus 3 modems. Nine, they had the... Not anymore, 60, though. Well, I'm I thought it was... That oh, okay. And they actually had the 6121 and the 6141 at very good pricing. They sold out of them. Uh, but you didn't want to buy them anyway because the reason they're clearing these out is that if Time Warner ever does get to their 300 megabit download, which they're offering, supposedly offering this year, for if you have theoretically, if you're if you have 50 down, five up, you're supposed to get 300 down, 20 up for no doesn't additional that money. Doesn't that depend where you are though? It does. 
But yeah, so so if you're not, if, I wouldn't say that don't buy that modem. I'd say look at your area. Like Albany is not a place that they've even talked about doing this 300. So for well, as far as you know, I haven't seen anything. I, I'm I assure you they're talking about it, but they have to prioritize markets. Yeah, exactly, and they're prioritizing the the triangle market. Well. Well, the, the, yeah, sort of, but uh, it sort of blows my mind that Albany is not on the radar as well, considering all the high-tech stuff that's going on up there. But It's insane. Well, in reality, though, they, these high-tech organizations up there probably have their own one-gig internet. Oh, they do, yeah. They've got all of the colleges use a college net, and it's a, it's it's fiber and everything. They're, they're, not, they're not using Time Warner. Dr. John says, can you get better performance from Time Warner if you buy your own modem? Well, mm. it depends. If I you're can... using what? I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll come in after. If you're using the Ubi that came with it, the answer to the question is yes. They've raised the price to either 6 or $7 a month to use their piece of crap modem. If you can, I mean, if you buy this, if you have the 6141, which is the one that I have, then I'm saving the money as long as you get your money back out of it. May, maybe it lasts a year. I was having a lot of disconnects with my service, but I also had multiple problems. They've been to my home 10 times at least to work on my internet. And knock on wood, I hate to say this, but knock on wood, at present it's rock solid as far as it is from my house to the nearest node. That part of it is is very solid right now because I stayed on them. In fact, this brings up the part where we've discussed, and I have advocated often in the Facebook podcasting group that I participate in, that people complain about uh, Skype not working and, it, and we lose this and lose that. And I'm telling you that if you've got solid internet uh, service, Skype works extremely well. Rarely is it a problem. Almost, there are only two things that we have a problem with, Nick. If this is wrong, correct me. But if your computer's not fast enough or if your internet service is flaky, Skype is terrible. Correct. If they're solid, it's amazing. Um, uh, one thing, Mike, you told me this, and you, um, if, if you are having flaky service with Time Warner and you're having outages. Mike told me this, God, it's probably been almost a year and a half, maybe two years. Keep track of every time your internet goes out. And then, you know, when that starts building up and you're in the hours and, and, and you know, five, six, seven hours of total time, call them up and rail on them and say, you know, th it was out then for 45 minutes. It was out then for 15 minutes and, and do that. And that'll hopefully do something, but keep calling because they won't do anything. You just have to keep calling and keep complaining until it's totally fixed. Absolutely. And stay on them. I mean, stay on them. <clears throat> and if you get uh, some dweeb when you call up, hang up and call back, you'll get a different dweeb that might be more helpful. Um, but uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that they can make the service reliable. There can be certain nodes and plant issues that, that have to be fixed, but when you document these things and they know that you're keeping up with it, they'll they add that adds a little bit of credibility to what you're doing. They take you more seriously. If you throw around a few terms that the the moron who answers the phone doesn't understand, they'll transfer you to someone because they'll think you know what you're talking about. But Dr. John is asking, is it worth waiting for high speed? Waiting for what? To buy a modem? I, but you, you, Dr. John, if you, there's, I believe it's the SB6183, if I'm not mistaken, the 6183, well, there, there's, there's one surfboard modem that you can buy today that is future proof, at least up to 300 megabits. I forget which one it is. It's not the 6121. It's not the 6141. 6183 is the one I'm looking at, but it says here, that it's uh, 16 down, 4 upload channels. There's one that has 16 down and 8 upload channels, as I recall. And so I'm not sure which one it is, but what I would suggest is that if you want to go get a modem, get the get the one that is DOCSIS 3.0, which they all are now, but it also is good up to 300 megabits. Even if you don't need it, it will future-proof you. What's going to happen is going to be interesting as, as far as like places like Albany is 6580 sounds right, but I'm not positive. Don't buy one on my recommendation without doing your homework. 
Hold on, I'm, I'm looking for it. Is that when RTP, uh, when this area finally does, if it ever does, get to 300 megabits, there are going to be some good 6141s for sale pretty cheap because people people who have purchased their own 6141s will definitely go out and purchase the 6580 if that's the correct one. And that 6580 uh, will, I guess some people like Amnon will keep three or four of the 6141s for spares, but normal people would get rid of them and get another high speed <laughs> for a spare. Well, this is interesting, Mike. The Surfboard SBG 6580 is actually a Wi-Fi router, too. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, I've, I've been very happy with this Surfboard modem. I would not have a problem using the wireless part of it but i'm wondering if i'm wondering if the the reason that this modem is so good is because that's all it does it doesn't do any of the other stuff and i'm wondering if this i'm not sure i'm not saying this i'm just observe an observation this thing is literally a modem it has a coax in and an ethernet out and power that is it there's no wi-fi antennas built in there's no right. switch built in so i'm wondering if it works so well as a modem because it's just a modem i doubt it because it's just a separate box in there which one are you using? I'm the 60, what's the white one? The 61... 41. 61, 41 or 61, 21, whatever the white You're one is. You're using a 41. Then I'm using a 41. Did you buy Did you buy it? I did, yeah. Hold on, let me look. And by the way, Mike, there was a lot of conversation in the Trilog uh, conference this week that Time Warner in the last few weeks raised the price on modems again on rental. So yes. they figured out that it'll take eight months to recover. They don't want to rent you a modem. They want it to be your problem. No. <clears throat> I'm looking at, I spent $88.31 in yeah. March of 2014 for the SB6141. Right. And, I mean, Mike, you remember before I had this modem, my internet was awful. Oh, no. Constant same, drop Same apps. here. It was... It was it, it was on. It was almost unusable. The Ubi modem was crap. I mean, even on this show, you could go back into the archives of this show, and see that we would several times during the show, I would lose. I would just drop out, just yeah. disappear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yours was that. a lot worse than mine was. But yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, even they don't want the Ubi because no, when, when I bought deal with, when I could have cut a deal with Motorola. When I bought mine, the sixty one forty one. And I called and I said, I need to return this one. They said, well, you're not paying for it, so don't worry about it. Just keep it. Right. All right. Yeah. So there's the, that, that new one I posted in chat is the, is, uh, this might not be a bad, uh, might, might not be a bad upgrade. They have an AC version as well. It's an AC Wi-Fi router. But see, now you do make a good point with regard to the integrated Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi is improving pretty significantly at a pretty fast pace. Yeah. And if this modem does, in fact, give you two, three, four years worth of service, the wireless on it will become outdated. I have. Okay, well, then, if that's the case, then let me retract that previous link and post this one. If you're going to buy this modem, get the... Uh, 6882, which is wireless AC, which is the top of the line Wi-Fi right now. It's 200 bucks, not the cheapest thing in the world, but you know, eight dollars a month, you're you're paying for it pretty quick, um, and then you won't have to worry about being behind. Well, you, you can. It, it's just I don't know what they're offering now, whether they have changed, but I mean, if if Time Warner is still providing these Ubi modems. It's worth the cost of getting your own modem to get the service improvement. Correct. The fact that it pays for itself is a nice bonus. Yeah. And, and the reason will. I say, I'm sorry. well, the reason I say it's a bonus is because if you have a lightning strike and take out the modem, now you got to go buy a new one. Yeah. Yeah. But I can say without a doubt, you will see an improvement <clears throat> with this modem. Uh, that's been our personal observations. Hopefully, that's still the case. Uh, uh, even not even from a from the it being stable or not. I I saw a speed improvement. I I used to sit around 30 megabits, maybe 31. With this new modem, I'm around 33, 34 now, consistently. 
It's very rare that I'm below that. So whatever whatever they're doing with and and the the, th the nice thing about it is Time Warner supports it nicely. They're not, you know, it's not a pain to set it up. You well, call, I'm, hey, I need this. I yeah. got a new modem. Okay. And I'm gonna reiterate one thing that I said earlier. If if you're not getting good service from Time Warner, you need to become a, a like a bad dream to those guys. They you need to haunt them because they can and will get it fixed. They're they don't want to. They don't want to spend the time. But uh, they they will they do have to come out and resolve it, and sometimes you have to get nasty with them. It's unfortunate, but it's often required. But I, I will tell you that the service that I have it may never work again after the show today. But right now, I don't even think about quality of service. I have to give Time Warner props for providing good quality internet service at least at this point in time. It's overpriced and it's too slow on the upload. But at this point in time, the, the quality is there. Sure, you hit times whenever you hit glitches and things go down, but anything that's man-made is going to break. And you, they sort of give them a pass on that. But for the most part, it, it works pretty well. Like, I, don't know about, I don't know about you, Mike, but like, I don't even experience, like, like I live in a residential neighborhood. I know you do. I don't experience that. People talk about these nightmares, 6, 7 o'clock, everybody yeah. comes home and they start streaming. And yeah. the internet's on news, but I've never experienced it. It used that. to be. It used to be because, and what the guy at Time Warner told me, and it was one of the supervisors who came over here that I got to know really well at the time, uh, what he said was when they went DOCSIS 3.0, that became a thing of the past because he said their capacity was so much greater than what the demand was that it's just not an issue anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it, it can be. I mean, as people get up to to using the capability and the capacity of the system, it very well could happen. And it's possible they can get overloaded nodes because of miswiring and carelessness and failed equipment and so forth. But that's why you have to stay on them. You need to learn how to do pings. You need to learn how to do quality tests. You need to periodically make sure you run a speed test on your system to, to sort of plot it to see how it's going. And even now, occasionally I'll notice some sluggishness. I'll run a speed test and find out, sure enough, things aren't going through as, as well as they should be. And I just make it a point to walk away for a few hours, go find something else to do, and come back. And it's almost always cleared. And and even a modem reboot, sometimes I'll do it. Like uh, like it was two or three weeks ago, I was just, the internet was cutting, not cutting in and out, but peaks or whatever. And I, modem reboot, that was done. Simple as that. It's a good thing to do a modern reboot every I, so often. It's, a, anyway. it's, another, it's another computer. Right. I, I'm not so sure, though, in, in that case, it's, it's a guess. I'm not so sure, though, that the modem reboot corrected a problem with the modem. It probably reestablished the handshake with the server. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, it reloaded that. It, it could have been a crashing modem because it is a computer. Or it may have reestablished the connection, the link with the server, the Time Warner server. In a, in any case, yes, it's a good idea. All right, are we done? I don't know. Stick a fork in your hand and see. Well, let's let's look at it this way. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys we're... are welcome to hang around as long as you like. It doesn't hurt my feelings in any way, shape, or form. Looks like the 6183. Yeah, that's is the one for 300. Ah, okay, yep. Yeah. Now, see, on Amazon, this thing is just this 6183 is the exact same price as the. Is the same price as the AC modem one? I don't know the answer to all that, but I would just make really sure that uh, you have a the the speeds is speed capable you need to go to time warner's website someone posted a link earlier and do a little research if you're going to start buying a modem make sure you buy one that is future proof for this 300 well, max look at the description on this is it says perfect for the new twc max plans in new york la austin time warner That's customers it. in charlotte dallas hawaii kansas city raleigh san antonio san diego will be seeing the, the thing max is mike i mean that's that's good practice but there are a lot of people that 30 is going to be way more than enough for what they do and they'll never need to spend more money right to go to and, higher and, speed and and my response to that amnon is yeah. to remind you that bill gates yeah bill gates you know who he is yeah 
All right, Bill Gates said he saw no reason why any computer would ever need over 640K of RAM. Yeah. Okay. And we're back. Maybe with 8K movies you will need. We don't know. That's true. And and you're only talking, how much is the 6183, Nick? 6183? It's, it's not, yeah, it's not much more. Uh, so, so you get one and get a year out of it. It doesn't break the bank anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, but if you're going to get the 61, at least on Amazon, the 6183, get the AC router one. It's uh, $14 more. And, but and for those cool. that don't understand, when Nick is saying AC, it doesn't mean power. Yeah, AC is Wi Fi. Mike was saying if you're going right. to buy a, a modem with a router, the, the, the router technology is, uh, it seems like after a lull, with not really much happening, it's starting to ramp back up again, and we're seeing improvements. And the AC is the most recent router technology. So, right. The, if you're going to get a modem router combo, get one that's AC compatible because it's just AC is is compatible. Also, going down to N and G and correct. all that. So, you'll yeah. Be fine. But see, I just bought a new router here that that's wireless N900. It doesn't even have AC. Yeah. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Well, no. <clears throat> the the guy that I'm giving it to does not have. Uh, any AC capable devices? Not right now. And is unlikely to get any within the next two years. Yeah, but so I guarantee you, there, I guarantee you, there was an AC router that was the same price as that one. All right, look it up and tell me. Came How much from was Amazon? It? This How is much the was R it? I don't know. Hundred and what's it called? It's the RT N sixty six U, the one that Sean said to buy. N sixty six U. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so uh let's see, so that was a hundred and nineteen bucks. Um let's see, for a hundred and sixty four dollars they've okay, got stop right there. What? You just said same price. I said might be the same price. Of course it's gonna be a little more. It's a right. different technology. I didn't want to spend the additional money because it wouldn't do him any good. This this one is actually the Asus RTAC sixty six U, so the same model and everything, except this one features A C. And that's 164 bucks. So if you're buying a router, go AC now. Or if, look, if you don't mind spending the 40 bucks, I totally agree with you. Well, I, well, here's the thing: if you're talking about upgrading your modem and your router, you're if you're going to upgrade your modem to whatever, so it can handle 300 megabits, and you're going to have a, a router that's not the most latest technology. What's the point? You're going to go. The point is, do it all or do it none. I think. The point is that if you have no AC capable devices, it doesn't matter if your router supports AC. That's true, but before long, all the the uh, exactly the laptops and device wireless devices will be using AC. But that doesn't mean that your N is not going to work. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I still got people using B. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it serves the purpose for the, exactly. what they're doing for uh, it. So absolutely, in, in is good. In can get you what fifty megabits. It's more than that, isn't it? Fifty-four. Well, 54 no, it's more than that. Yeah, the the, uh, the okay, G gets. So, so they're stuck at fifty megabits for two to three years. Oh yeah. darn. The four hundred and fifty. In. 802.11n up to 450 megabits. 802.11g. Actually, that's what this says here. 54. 802.11b11. Yeah, it, uh, g is the 54. But uh, AC supports 1300 megabits a second. Now remember, so, this this is in my mic, but this is important if you do file transfers. Well, uh, not streaming too. On a wireless no. computer. No. Yeah, streaming for sure. If you've got a bunch of devices streaming, I guarantee you having that AC is going to make your connectivity better. The, so, yeah, all right, but, let's be clear. I am absolutely in favor of getting a router and, oh, I know and wireless you access point with AC. Absolutely in favor of it. But I'm telling you that whenever I've been buying routers in the $60, $70, $80 range, and then I want to step up, I go to the $120 range, then stepping up another 40 to the $160 range, now I'm twice where I originally was. All I'm saying is in being practical, if 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 my buddy gets two years out of this, money well spent. Nick, you you are you're going to be limited by the speed of the internet. 
Not if you're streaming media in house. I disagree. Oh, oh um, in house. Yeah, that's different. Okay. Uh, okay. No, no. I'm talking about like like the Roku and stuff. Plus, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that's different. Plus, you're right. Uh, you're flex. absolutely right. The faster, the better. Yeah. Yeah. All all I'm all all I'm saying here, and I know Mike is agreeing with me. Um, if you're gonna go out and you're gonna spend, you know, money to get a 300 megabit router, you should get a hundred. You should get the the AC router. If you're gonna get a, if you're gonna get the modem that supports 300, you should get the AC router. If, if money is no object, get the top of the line. And, exactly. and at present, I will reiterate what I have said is just my opinion. Avoid net gear like the Ebola. And uh, uh, at this point in time, I have not used this one yet. <clears throat> but in our group, we've reached the decision that ASUS is probably the best deal going. A friend did buy a Cisco, uh, not a Cisco, a Linksys, and install it, and it did work fine. All right. All right. Hey, Merle. Yes, sir. You're still here. I'm here. I just forgot I was here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Quick I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm not, I got a quick question before we get out of here. Yeah. Uh, who do you use for domain name registering? Do you use Enom? No, I use Register.com. Okay. Just curious. Alrighty. All right. So, say, what'd you say? This was a good show. Yes, it was. And for a weekend right after New Year's, I guess everybody's back home. Except for Spence. Yeah, Spence had to go. Okay, everybody. Um, thanks again. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie, and Donna. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at computers2know.com. While you're at it, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tonight at uh, 8 o'clock, it is the Tanya Love Show. And we'll see you then. Get a Mac. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net.